<laughs> We'd all like to thank you for giving this reception to the Save the Whale campaign. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's a subject that's dear to our hearts. I mean, we both believe that... Excuse me, darling. Could I have a glass of champagne? Certainly. As I was saying, one of the most important things that we can learn from nature is, of course, um... <laughs> balance. Why does it never happen in the movies? the people that come to these parties really want to save the whales or just use it as another excuse to get drunk? Uh, I guess I feel sorry for them, though. After all, they are an endangered species. I mean, the poor things have almost been hunted out of existence. You know, that's something I've never been able to do. Hunt. I suppose if I had to survive in the woods, I could go out and kill an animal. But just to go out and kill an animal for sport, I've never been able to do that. Now, I'm not against it. I don't know about here, but you say that in states and hunters get furious. Well, you eat meat! That same damn thing, boy. <laughs> Not really, though. It's removed. Oh, I suppose if they slaughter the cow at my table, I might pass on a fillet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want a steak, monsieur? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Get that out of here, please. Woo! And take back this Bloody Mary, would you please? <laughs> Just bring me a salad. That's nice and safe. I'm not sure about that anymore. I know people that are vegetarians because they refuse to eat something that's been killed, which I respect, but those are the same people that tell me I should talk to plants. <laughs> They'll say that. You got plants? Yeah, talk to your plants. What? Talk to your plants. They're alive. They got emotions and feelings just like you do. Well, it's fine if you believe that, but I figure, well, if that's true, a vegetable's a plant. So if you eat a vegetable, you got to kill it. So I figure, well, if that's your reasoning, then to me, that's just the degree of the life that you're killing. Just because there's no gore and no struggle with vegetables, but then who knows? Maybe lettuce screams when they pull it out of the ground. I mean, we don't know everything. Maybe someday they'll amplify it. <laughs> well, it sounds awful, but it's quick. <laughs> Ever since then, I've kind of looked at vegetables with a little different look, because they do seem to have little personalities of their own. Lettuce always strikes me as being very cool, very crisp. You know that kind of personality? Hey. That real crisp, kind of cool personality. Whereas tomatoes are paranoid. <laughs> it's true. Tomatoes are classified as a fruit, but they pass as a vegetable. <laughs> You're a fruit. I ain't no fruit. <laughs> I'm a vegetable. It says here, your fruit. I don't care what it says there, buddy. I mean, I got nothing against fruits. I've been in salads with them. <laughs> I'm a vegetable. You are who you hang with, and don't forget that. <laughs> And they're just like dogs. The smaller you breed them, the more nervous they get. Those little cherry tomatoes, those things are the most nervous damn little things. Did you ever chase one around a salad bowl? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, quick, get over behind the lettuce. Quick, under the green pepper. And then when you finally get them, boy, you can't cut them open. You're trying to cut the skin on one side and the seeds are sneaking out the back. <laughs> so when you finally get it open, there's nothing there. Nothing here, man, we're clean. <laughs> they all got little personalities. Carrots are stubborn. Did you ever bite into a raw stalk of a carrot? It'll stiffen and resist you. No. No. No, please! Okay. Radishes are afraid of the dark. It's true, radishes go down fine, but when they get in the stomach, they want to get the hell out. Where are we? I don't know, let's get out of here. And then you're up there trying to talk. Well, Fred, about this... Now, about this merger, I... Stay down there. They all got little personalities. Asparagus, now that's the sneakiest vegetable of all of them, see, because asparagus looks so innocent. Lays in a dish, yeah, fine, you can do anything you want to it, put butter on it, sauce, yeah, whatever, lay it on me. <laughs> More sauce, fine, saute me, sure, whatever you want. Chews up, fine, goes down smooth, lays in the stomach, pretty cool. But asparagus waits till you go to the bathroom. <laughs> gotcha now, you rat fake! <laughs> Eat my butt, will ya? <laughs> Nature's own tracer bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Parsley.
parsley. Now, there's a very clumsy little vegetable. Parsley, actually, is a voyeur. It just lays on a plate and watch everybody else get eaten, you know? And, and very clumsy, falls off the plate. Hey, look at the asparagus. Gets up, falls into the sauce. Drips over pea, falls into the mashed potatoes. And I better fall into bed. I got a big day tomorrow. Got a lot to do. Oh, well, that'll be no problem. I'll just set my alarm and I'll be uh, up like a flash. Kenny, time to get up. <laughs> yes, I know. Now, look, you better be up in two minutes, or I'm coming in there and I'm stripping off the bedclothes. Hello. Oh, hello, how, how are you? <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thanks. Coming to the party tonight. Uh, Kelly? Well, I'm so... Hang on, Hal. Sorry, Hal. Left the gate off and he nearly got away from me again. <laughs> now, about the party tonight. No, you can bring whoever you like. <laughs> <laughs> And your ex-wife? Yes, sure. <laughs> 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 oh no, it's just informal, Hal. You tell me about it. <laughs> okay? Fine. See you about eight tonight. Bye. <sighs> Come along now, sleeping beauty. Up here with you. Come along up the steps. Quickly, there we are. Now you sit. What time did you get to bed last night? Uh, Tuesday, very. Three o'clock? Oh, I say for prison. It was clean so far. Oh, yes, I can see you cleared up. <laughs> Thanks very much. Where's that room? You've a uh, chicken time of Tuesday, okay? Uh, no, you drink your juice oh. first and then you can have your coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> same juice that we always have. Oh. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> Drink your coffee. Mm -hmm. There. Thank you. Morning. <laughs> Welcome to the land of the living. You call this living? <laughs> I got a terrible taste in my mouth. Well, mouth tastes like the bottom of this flower vase. <laughs> well, that's not surprising. Oh, not again. Mm -hmm. uh, Could have been worse. Could have been a cactus. Uh, yeah. Drink your juice. Oh, thank you. I wonder if you could do me a favor. Suzanne, don't you think it's a little early for that? <laughs> no, listen. Mm -hmm. I've got to get a dress for this party tonight. And I was wondering if you could come along and give me a sort of second opinion. Second opinion? Suzanne, you're buying a dress, not getting a nose job. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know if it's really me, you know. All right, I'll look on the price tag. If it's under a fiver, it's really you. <laughs> I can't get a dress for under five pounds. I'll tell you what, then. Why don't you buy some sexy underwear instead, and we'll call this silly party off. I thought you said it was too early for that sort of thing. This is a part I hate about shopping with my wife. Hanging around, waiting until she tries on about two or three hundred dresses. I never know what to do in these places. I always feel so uncomfortable anyway. You know? What do you do? Than I thought. Can you see anything you like? <laughs> no, <laughs> just looking. Fashion. It's an amazing industry, isn't it? I never really got into clothes too much till I really got to know myself. Before that, 
I never knew who I was, really, so salesmen just could sell me anything. I was easy prey for them. I mean, those guys could see me coming a mile away, you know. Oh, here he comes! Hey, Lou, get out that crap that never sells. <laughs> oh, I'd buy it, boy. Buy a suit with the fly in the back. <laughs> you sure this is right? Latest style, just in from Paris. <clears throat> yeah, but what do I do when I have to? Oh, you'll find a way. <laughs> I believe everything they tell me. What about this extra sleeve? It'll press out. <laughs> I think the crotch is too tight. Well, it stretches with you. <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> I suppose they have to lie, though. I mean, when you're dealing with people's self-image and their vanity, I suppose you can't really be honest with them. Not gonna sell too many suits that way. You know. How's the suit look? Well, I think it makes you look like a big slob. <laughs> if you get rid of that fat butt of yours, drop about 80 pounds off that gut and firm up those sagging boobs, maybe I can tell you a suit looks halfway decent. <laughs> look, I can't change the fact you're a short little twerp. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, everybody's concerned about looking good. What's the old saying, clothes make the man? They left off the word broke, by the way. <laughs> clothes are very expensive today. I bought a suit not too long ago. I bought it from a magazine. That's a mistake, too, because they never look like the models. When the models wear them, you know, they always look so great. See, I bought the same suit that this model was wearing. He was standing like one of those typical model poses, you know? They always stand like this. <laughs> and I bought the same suit the guy was wearing, see? And it looks great, as long as I stand like this. <laughs> but I realized when I stand up that the right pant leg is about... <laughs> Damn, I wish he'd hurry up. I hate this waiting around, you know? I always feel like some old sugar daddy waiting for his young mistress. Well, how does this grab you, big daddy? What? Hmm? We don't want your heart to give out. Well, not just yet. <laughs> oh, come back here, my little sausage roll. Mm. <laughs> you sure this ain't too formal? Uh, Would you be happy taking me out in this? I'd be happier taking you out of it. <laughs> is that all you got on your mind? These days, that's the only place it is. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna be chilly in this. Oh. I think I need some fur. Oh, come back here, my little vapor. Oh, oh my God, I've died. <laughs> How'd you like your little girl in this? I've left my body. <laughs> I can see it's still standing there in the dress shop. I wonder how long they'll leave me there. <laughs> I can see her coming toward me. Oh, God, I can't look. <gasps> I knew you'd like it. Oh. Can I have it? Well, uh, how much might all this now? It's 2,000 pounds for the dress, mm -hmm. 5,000 pounds for the coat, and another 1,000 pounds because you're old and rich and with her. <laughs> 8,000 pounds? You're right, Daddy. I'm gonna have to give you the kiss of love. The kiss of love? Oh, yeah. mm. Mm. That better? Oh, more, more. <laughs> mm. Mm, dear. Oh. Oh. Can I have mm. the coat and the dress, Daddy? No. If you say no, I'll hold my breath. No. No! A thousand times no! If you say yes, when we get home, I'll let you play your favorite game. My favorite game? Mm -hmm. You mean with the gym slip and the warm custard? And the boots. Don't forget the boots. The boots. The boots! How could I ever forget the boots? <laughs> what do you think? 
Well, it's super. You don't sound too convinced. No, I think it looks terrific. Hmm. Sure you're not just saying that? Now, why would I say that if I didn't think it looks terrific? Oh, you're hopeless. Excuse me. Could you tell me honestly what you think of this? I think it looks terrific. Now, why couldn't you say something like that? <laughs> Hey, where are you going now? I'm just going to try on some jeans. Jeans? Well, that'll take another two hours. Because <laughs> that's how long it takes to get a pair of those things on. Because in order for jeans to be fashionable today, they've got to be skin tight. I mean, so tight to the point where you can hardly carry anything in your pocket. Because if you do, you've got to go to these elaborate procedures to try and get it out. <laughs> Excuse me. Have you got change for a pound? Uh, yeah, I think I... I do if I can. There's a tin there, I think. Now, there are some advantages to that. For one thing, it certainly cuts down on the incidence of pickpockets. <laughs> I wonder if people follow fashion or fashion follows people. Because I'm sure one of the reasons that there's such an emphasis on keeping fit, trim, and sexy is because today's clothes only look good on that kind of figure. But which came first? Now, in the 40s, there wasn't that same kind of emphasis because, well, they didn't have to worry because the clothes were baggy and they never took them off. I mean, never. Remember those old 40s movies where the women wore dresses and the men wore ties, suits, and hats all the time, no matter where they were or what they were doing? July, 44, in a gin joint in Jersey. That's right. Oh, that joint was jumping. And you had that jazzy jacket with the oh, giant... Oh, Judy, I've got to... Johnny, you're joking. Johnny's in the jewelers. Well, dump the dope and... Johnny. I'm sorry. Jack the John and we'll... That's better. Take a jaunt in my Jeep. <laughs> meet me later. Where we always used to meet. You mean... Johnny. Judy. Oh, Johnny. My joints are all jelly. I've waited so long. So long. Why did you jilt me, Judy? Johnny, it was Jimmy. Jimmy? I thought it was Joey. No, that was after Jimmy. Or was after Jackie. Or was after Jenny. Jenny? Judy? Johnny, I told you I waited so long. Oh, Judy. Judy, I just... Johnny, you're so jittery. Are you in a jam? I've... I've been away. Not jail, Johnny. Jail? No, Judy, the jungle. Japanese? And in January, the Jerry's. Oh, it was awful. Every time I think about it, I get the heebie-jeebies. First it came from the left, then it came from the right, then it came from the middle. Pretty soon they were attacking from all sides. Oh, Johnny, those Japanese have got you jabbering. Japanese? These were G.I. hecklers. <laughs> it was the worst camp show I've ever done. Gee, I felt like a jerk. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Judy. Let's junk all this gibberish and let's be like old times. Let's... Let's go for a swim. Let's go for a swim. <laughs> Yeah, I figure in those days, people either had bad bodies or disgusting underwear. <laughs> oh, obviously, they had to take their clothes off sometimes. I mean, how else would you explain the post-war baby boom? <laughs> Unless there was a large percentage of babies being born prematurely clothed. <laughs> now, today's attitudes towards clothes are a lot more relaxed, and more and more people are being exposed to... more and more people being exposed. 
I suppose that's why people are so conscious of their bodies today, you know, with health foods and exercise and jogging. Seems like everybody's a jogger today. And apparently it's good for you, not only physically either. I read someplace that a group of psychiatrists said that jogging is very good for people that are severely depressed. Of course, they're easy to spot. They're the ones that are jogging in the fast lane of the M1 into the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> now, I jog to keep myself in, not only in condition, but also to keep my weight in check, see? Because it's so easy to build yourself a prison of fat. And that's what it is, a prison of fat. You ever see some fat person walking down the street? Now, I'm not talking about somebody that's overweight. I'm talking about somebody that's huge, enormous. One of those people you look at and you go, how does this guy, uh... I mean, uh, what does he do when he has to, uh... uh does he ever see his, uh... <laughs> shoes? Uh, I mean, when he has sex, does he, uh, does his wife, uh, how does this guy live? <laughs> he lives in a prison. It's a prison of fat. You can see him looking out from a little face looking out inside there. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? <laughs> how long in for? Life. <laughs> Not long to go, eh? <laughs> Because every time I see somebody like that, I just imagine their heart pushing all that fat around. Oh, God. More cholesterol? Two flights of stairs. You gotta be kidding. And they never admit they're fat, those people. No, I'm not fat. It's... I got big bones. You got a lorry full around here? No, it's not fat, it's water retention. What are you retaining? The North Sea? <laughs> it's very dangerous. That's why I jog, just to keep myself in condition. Now, that's not to say that there's not inherent dangers in jogging, because there are. In fact, there's one danger that's common to all joggers. Dogs. <laughs> In the... Yeah, I can see where you got bitten. In the neighborhood. <laughs> well, that's not a bad-looking neighborhood. Suzanne, I'm in pain. I threw my back out somehow, jogging. God. Gonna be all right for the party tonight? Oh, yeah. I'll just stay out of the way. Like you did at that charity dinner last week. Oh, you gonna bring that up again? They deserve that. I mean, God, imagine that, having an eight-course dinner party in Belgravia to help the starving millions in India. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what? My dress. What? My dress is caught. What's it got on? How on earth do I know? It's caught in a leg under there. <clears throat> Hold on, I'll uh, move it. Hold the table. Can't figure out the starch yet. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Come in. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. How's my bread and butter? Hi, Al. How are you? You remember the little woman? The ex little woman. Oh, hello, Edna. How are hello. you? Hello. Kelly, this is my cousin Daryl. Daryl, this is the man who gets 90% of my salary. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, how? Nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, Edna. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see so much of you. <laughs> oh, how quaint. I see you brought your little dog. <laughs> part of my skirt. Oh. Yes, I helped her uh, pick it out. I got good taste, haven't I? Yes, in dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Edna, it's lovely, really. And uh, this is your cousin? Yeah. How are you, Mrs? <laughs> he used to be an island off the Scottish coast. <laughs> well, you know where the drinks are. Just help yourself, why don't you? Get... Hey, how come you're walking so funny? Uh, What's the matter? You getting too much for him? Oh, no, he's fine lying down. He hurt his back jogging. Suzanne? Mm -hmm. What did you say that for? Well, now everybody's going to want to try and fix it. Oh, yeah. Bad back. <laughs> Where does it hurt exactly? See? No. Um, so is it down here? No, it no, it's fine. It really is. It's just yeah. a little pain. Oh, oh you, you know what? I could fix that for you. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. I have a man over on Harley Street. Ah, you don't want to waste your money on those quacks. Daryl knows all about bad backs. He's a wrestler. Yeah. You've probably heard of me. Attila the Nun, the superior mother. <laughs> Tell her the nun? It's a simple matter of realigning the dorsical vertebrae. Oh, no, I'll show you, no, mate. No, no, right. Here. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, mate. Good as new. Oh. Well, I reckon you've earned that drink, Daryl. Reminds me of that job you did on Genghis Cohen, the kosher killer. Remember when he had you all balled up like an egg roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kelly? If I can drag you away from your impersonations for just a moment, <laughs> he does a wonderful Quasimodo. <laughs> this is uh, Dooley Tenbury. He's a fantastic photographer. How are you? How do you do? Is uh, something wrong? No. Oh, no. no, he's just got a little trouble with his back. Suzanne! <laughs> Bad trouble, eh? When you no. come to the right man. No. I fell with my old regiment had a similar kind of problem. Back kept going out on him. So did his wife, that matter. <laughs> she was the best regimental mascot we ever had. Beat a goat any day of the week. <laughs> That's another, another story. <laughs> we had this wonderful sergeant major. Yeah. He had the best bone cracker in the whole business. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He just grabbed your arm huh? so oh. and... Yeah! <laughs> oh, yank. Oh, I say, I made a funny. A yank for a yank. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Julie? I've just given this yank a yank. Oh, oh you poor, poor. No, 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 no. It's all right, yank. This is my wife, Heather. She's a nurse. Oh, yeah? Does it hurt badly? Uh -huh. Are you in terrible pain? Yeah. Oh, and have all these naughty men tried to fix you and hurt you instead? Yes, they hurt me. They hurt me. Oh, you poor thing. They didn't know how to do it, did they? No. Oh, no. Well, I'm a nurse, and you just relax. Oh, yeah. Put your head on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. And have a good cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this way and smile. Yeah. Done. Uh, Kelly, you remember Simon, my tennis coach? Hello, oh. Kelly. Oh, I... I've seen some kinky positions, but this is ridiculous. Oh. Simon, you have to excuse him. He's just hurt his back. Uh, back trouble? Why didn't you just say so? I have a foolproof no, cure. No, it's based on the no. ancient teachings of a Buddhist monk. No need to no, worry. Really, I'm... I picked it up and I played in the Dalai Lama Grass Tennis Championships oh. in Tibet. Ah. Just get this off. Oh. Just lie down. Oh. Oh. Just for... Excuse me, can you turn him over, please? Oh. 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 What's up here? Pass me oh. sweet, please. No. Why? No, I guarantee oh. you this will stretch muscles you didn't even know you had. Oh. Still angry with me? Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. I really am. <laughs> you were quite right. I never should have mentioned your back. Party go, though, didn't it? All right, I can see you don't want to talk about it. We'll discuss it in the morning. <laughs> Suzanne. Yes, darling? You just kissed my foot. <laughs> <laughs>